Welcome to Monarch Beach Golf Links, the venue for the opening two events of this year's World's Strongest Man. Ten competitors have qualified through five gruelling events, including two Englishmen, Mark Felix, the plaster from Blackburn, and Britain's Strongest Man, Terry Hollands. Lying ahead of them, that's one hell of a challenge. The champion is American Phil Fister, but Maris Kujanowski wants his title back. There's England's Terry Hollands, the Estonian Tom O'Min. From America, Dave Ostlin, Poland's Sebastian Venter, Don Pope from the USA, England's Mark Felix. 1998 champion Sweden's Magnus Samuelsson and the young American Kevin Nee, all chasing the same goal to become world's strongest man 2007. Well, quite a lineup then, and the first event is one of the most brutal openers ever in World's Strongest Man. With the details, two former winners, Bill Kazmaier, and first, Sven Carlson. Thank you, Martin. The first event of World's Strongest Man 2007, the loading race. Barrels and kegs. Varies in weight from 100 to 110 kilo. We've seen these barrels before in the qualifier. But if carrying them isn't enough, they even have to place them on these platforms. Bill Kassmeyer, what's the secret? The secret is being super fit as a strong man, racing back and forth. Their heart rate is going to go over 200 beats. Their breath is going to be squeezed out as they hold onto the barrels. And the most difficult task is actually getting the last one on top of this platform. Let's see who it will be to win the first event of World Strongest Man 2007. Well, there are 10 men in this event, and I think all of them have looked at this opening event and said, is this how tough this is going to be? Because this looks brutal. This loading race is not for the faint of heart. Magnus Samuelsson Magnus Samuelsson, who won this event way back in 1998, comes in in plenty of confidence. Lane two, Kevin Nee from the United States. Yeah, he there from Boston. A young man, currently a student at Arizona State University. Lane three, Mark Felix from England. The plasterer from Blackburn who just keeps getting better and better. Lane four, Sebastian Venta from Poland. Unofficially now, Poland's number two behind the great Kuchinovsky. Lane five, Dave Ostlund. The six foot seven giant from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now he's got long arms and long legs, Ostlund. And a lot of people think, well, that could make him a favorite here, especially with getting hold of these barrels because it's about grip. And hello, Vent is in a bit of trouble here. Ostlund and uh, the rest of them are all uh, running pretty well, but Vent is in trouble. And look at the speed with which Ostlund is covering this course. There's a bit of cardiovascular work to be done here. And all the others, including Mark Felix, are having trouble with the load part of this. And this is where Ostlund's height is really paying off. He doesn't have so far to lift those things. I think you're absolutely right. This could well be the most brutal event ever. First event ever. Maybe maybe event full stop ever. This is going to tell, uh, really sort the men from the boys here. And Felix just cannot get that barrel on. I mean, this, this really is favouring the big guys. And it's the six foot seven Dave Ostland that has made short work of a field that came into this with dread. Ostland has walked through it. All the others are still virtually on the, on the start line. Venter after that slow start, looks like he's gonna pick up some decent points here. But look at the state of Felix and Kevin Nee. They can't even get that barrel up there. Well, you can hardly call Mark Felix a titch. He's six foot three and has probably the longest arms in the business. I don't know what's wrong with him. Old Maggie over there at the back, he's, uh, well, his bad back. Oh, he nearly got the fourth one in. Puts it up for pride. Kevin Lee and Mark Felix, what a shock. What about this? That's a shock. Dave Ostland off to an absolute flyer. They all came into this one saying, I don't think I like the look of this very much. And you can now see why. Look at the problems Mark Felix is having. It was only Ostland that made that look easy. So, heat one in the record books. What do we get from heat two? Don Pope has spent most of 2007 nursing one ailment or another, but boy, has he come good at just the right time. Tarbo Mitt from Estonia. The Estonian was a fifth place finish. 
last year. Playing three, Terry Hollands from England. Big sell. Getting better and better from a failure to qualify for the final two years ago Lane to seventh four. in the final last Dale year. Fister. The defending champion Stage. nursing a bad back. Lane five, Marius Putinovsky. And huge support here for Putinovsky, the three time former champion, but was knocked off his pedestal by Fister last year and is desperate to get Ready? back. And all five of these would have seen the problems that some of these fellas had. And it's not so much carrying the barrel, it's getting them onto that podium. Kudzianowski's made a fast start, Fister's made a slow start, and Tamo Mitt on the far side in the yellow is certainly having some problems. But Kudzianowski is uh, tearing through this right now. Mitt and Don Pope over there on the far side are both struggling at the moment. Mitt, oh, something's happened to Mitt there. He's just dropped the barrel and walked away from it. And Mitt is in some distress. Kudzianowski's not. Terry Hollands is going pretty well. But he's looking like a sprinter out there against middle distance runners. Marius Kudzianowski. What a time. He's destroyed Dave Austin's 44-10. Terry Hollands is not going bad either. Oh, Terry's got inside Ostland as well. Kudzianowski's leading the cheerleaders, but that's bonus points for Terry Hollands. And what on earth has happened to Tamo Mitt, who's walked away from this course? Don Pope is slow and steady. Mitt is getting some attention. This doesn't look good for the Estonian. And Don Pope doesn't want to know about this, does he? He's getting out of town. Five seconds. Yeah, you can give him five minutes. He's not going to. He's not going to have a go at that one. He's pointing at his biceps as well. That's uh, really bad news from Tom Omid. It's pretty obvious his, his biceps up by his shoulder. And that'll uh, sadly be the end of Tomo's competition. But how about Marius Pudzianowski? Talk about biceps. Look at the size of those. <laughs> Ripped to the bone. But Terry Hollins, great start as well. Happy now. Excellent work. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Second on that event. Good. Wasn't too far behind Marius. And now I've got a bad event next in the safe lift, so I needed a good result here. So it looks like I got it, so I'm happy. Pudzianowski wins, but second place for Hollands confirms him as a real contender. Ostland and Fister also impressive. But there's agony for Tamo Mitt as he tears a bicep in the opening event. The Estonian will play no further part. Marius Pudzianowski has taken the first step towards regaining his title. Join us after the break for more action. Yes, welcome back to sun-drenched Southern California and the final of the 2007 World's Strongest Man. Next up, the safe lift. And this is not an easy one at all. Those safes swing around in the breeze. Not that there's much of a breeze here in Anaheim, but it's all about keeping control. Well, heavier than in the qualifications, Kevin Mee is the man that's uh, set the bar highest at the moment with 10. Terry Holland's terrific start in that first event. And he's in direct head-to-head -head competition with the old boy, Magnus Samuelson. Picked up a sixth place in that opener. That really did open the eyes of these fellas. Now, it's about controlling the weight here as much as anything. Because as you can see, it's a little bit breezy. And once those safes start to swing, you lose control. And when you've lost control, you can't lift. It's that simple. And Terry Hollins has made a, a steady start, I suppose, is the best way to say it. Samuelson's going well, but Terry doesn't look happy at all. I think this is Terry's real bogey event. In training before this, uh, this is the event he, he just couldn't get his head round. He, he likes to press things slowly and steadily with those huge arms of his. And he swing around if you do. You have to jerk it up like Samuelson there. That's it. That's great. Seven reps for Samuelson. He's hunting down these ten here. Uh, Terry, I mean, he, he's... How much of this is psychological from the big fella? He, it, it's almost like he's beaten before he starts. His body language is all wrong as he came up. It's the old saying, paralysis by analysis. And I think Big Terry's uh, he's quite a cerebral strong man. He thinks about it almost too much sometimes. Sometimes it's best not to think about it, just do it. Samuelson has gone into first place, although there's some big guns to come. Terry Hollands, though, in a field that's reduced to nine because of Tamo Mid's injury. And I think he's going to have to settle for ninth place here because three reps isn't very good at all. Samuelson, well, he's got 11. 
How good is that going to be? And Samuelson says enough's enough, but Terry Hollands is going to get knocked right back down amongst the also rams here and if terry ever wants to win this thing he can't have a weak event he's got to eliminate these problems that he builds for himself well you, you just don't know terry can fight back from this he knew he had to get this out of the way i think that's why he's looking you know disappointed but uh, the shrug of the shoulders says everything now samuelson he, he was probably banking on this kind of event good numbers for him look at terry's technique he's, he's gonna have to work on that Marius Poczyniowski from Poland! Yeah! Poczyniowski made that first event, as did Dave Ostlin, by the way. It looked ridiculously easy. Ostlin, Poczyniowski and Hollands absolutely obliterated that loading race. Let's see how they get on in safe mode. Poczyniowski's off fast. And Ostlin... It's again, it's that, it's these big guys, isn't it? Look how much trouble Ostlund had just getting one lift done there. Pudzianowski, squat and more compact, much more the power lifter. Whereas Ostlund with those long limbs of his, he doesn't enjoy this event at all. Look at the reps Pudzianowski's doing as well. He's even holding it up there for a second, longer than the others, just to say, hey, I am the best. And I don't even have to cheat or even bend the rules a little. Watch this, right up there, thank you very much. And Ostlund is going to struggle to get anywhere near Terry Holland's three. This is good news for Terry. It's a disaster for Big Dave. Pudzianowski's target is 11. 30 seconds. Down! 30 seconds still to go. Ostlund's done. Well, Pudzianowski goes in the first place. Ostlund just cannot lock those elbows. Pudzianowski knows he's got to put a few more on the board with some good men to come. Ostlund's just got to try and find something, anything. There's, uh, there's uh, Magnus. I've just seen Pudzianowski blow by him, and you can hear in the crowd Maris's father leading the cheers here for his little boy. They won't give him that 16th lift. He ran out of time. Maris is not happy. He's not happy at all, is he? He's worried about Phil Fister, you know. Fister had a bad first event. But uh, Fister's trained hard at this. Do you remember last year when Fister managed to press out the rocks? Look, there's Pudzianowski's dad in the background. <laughs> He's a little fella, isn't he? Phil Fister from the United States. Well, Fister did okay in the uh, opening event. Took a fourth place. Sebastian Venter. Sebastian Venter. Who was just behind Fister in fifth. So these two fellas are very much in the mix here if they get a good event. But let's not forget last year when Fister really started the charge of his comeback on the overhead pressing event, didn't he, on the stone, so can he do it again? And Venter, a terrific lifter. Fister has been nursing a back issue. Venter, who is built for this event, just moves in front. 15, Pudzianowski had to set the bar high because he knew that uh, guys like this were still to come. Venter's off to a flyer. Fister is doing okay. They've both gone by Terry Hollands. That's bad news for Big Tell. Look at Venter. I mean, he's lost controls of the, of the safe. They're going off at a 45 degree angle. They're heading for the golf course. But Venter is keeping them there. That shot putting background for Venter. Look at him. Explodes up with the legs. He's put nearly 20 meters. Polish champion. So much power, Venter. Well, Fist, well, Fist, this isn't what Fister wanted, did he? No, it's, I mean, it's looking bad for Fister because of what Venter's doing. And Venter is now at a, virtually a full 90 degrees and uh, getting close to Fister's platform, but he's still getting the lift. One more puts him in the first place. There you go. They'll give him that. Yeah. It's a Poland one and two here. And Fister looking to try and add if he can. Good numbers for Phil Fister. I think Venter's more or less flamed out at 16. No, he's found another one. That's tremendous. And are they going to give Fister a 13th? No, they're not. And now it's Fister's turn to glower at the officials. But they got that one spot on. That was not an extra lift from Phil Fister. No matter how hard he looks at the referee, that is not 13 for Fister. He'll have to settle for 12. Right. 17 reps, the last one on one leg, not bad from Sebastian Venter. As usual, Pudzianowski is in the top two, Phil Fister has to settle for third. Well, Terry Holland said this was a bad event for him and he wasn't wrong, just three lifts and eighth place.
Pujanovski still on top. Sebastian Venter moves into second place. The champion is on the shoulders of the leaders, but Terry Hollands has dropped out of the top three. Mark Felix is rock bottom. Dave Oslin has slipped into the bottom half. To see if Terry Hollands can make amends in the next event, let's join our commentators, Nick Halling and Colin Bryce. Well, we love the Fingles fingers. It's a question of how many fingers you can flip through 180 degrees, how fast you can do it. And Sebastian Venter is the man that is setting a very hot pace here. That's a world record for Venter. Terry Hollands! So for Terry Hollands and everybody else, I think it's not a case of thinking about what Venter's done, it's a case of thinking about what you've got to do. Phil Fister! Who's seen his own world record in Fingles Fingers destroyed by Sebastian Venter. Take your position! Well, what a world-class field when you've got a couple of guys like this down in, down in the sort of middle of the pack. Well, Fister's off to fly, nothing Phil Fister likes more than a challenge, and he's seen his world record destroyed, so he's going to want to come and snap it straight back. Powered his way, bludgeoned his way through three, I mean, it, it, talk about economy of effort, he's destroying these fingers, Hollands is not going bad at all, but Fister is setting an incredible pace. Hollands tucks in just behind him, Fister's got a chance at this, you know, oh, he's just going to miss it, not by much, 31-78. He was inside a second of Venter. Hollands has slowed, but it's still good for Big Tell. Oh, Fister wanted that, didn't he? Oh, and he nearly had it as well. That was tight. I don't believe it. He's actually throwing it up. It's leaving his hands halfway up. Did you see how explosive Fister is? Well, uh, he didn't manage to beat Venter, though. Hollands. Uh, Perhaps a little disappointed. He really wanted to go sub 40 seconds for the first time ever, and he didn't manage that. Fister's comeback isn't happening this year. Ladies and gentlemen from Sweden, Magnus Samuelsson. Uh, Samuelsson. He's one of the uh, contenders still. From Poland, Marius. But Pudzianowski is the leader. However, if there is one weakness in this man's armory, this is it. He's not fast, and with Venter and Fister going off like a couple of greyhounds at uh, Catford, I mean, he really is going to be asking an awful lot. He's done this before, though. He's gone quick to the three, and uh, just starts to burn out at the four. Well, this is amazing from uh, Pudzianowski so far, and it's seeing Venter and Fister, I think, that's motivated him. He's absolutely blasted his way through four. Can he finish the job? And he's uh, destroying Samuelson. This is good. Look at the time. Oh, my goodness. Weakness? What weakness? He didn't manage to beat Venter, but he stayed ahead of Pfister, and that's a huge advantage for him. And this is a Poland 1-2. But for Pudzianowski, that could be the event that sees him reclaim his crown, because he wasn't expected to do well here. <laughs> He's jumping over and grabbing Venter, who's broken the world record, but it's pretty ice cold. So, I mean, this is almost as good as winning the title for Marius. It's been his Achilles heel for years. How good for him. You beat your best time in over 14 seconds from last year. I've never seen you so happy, never. <laughs> yes, yes, because this is all the time by his bad events. And now two months, two months today, three times every day, one hour, three finger. And now, very, very fast up. It's so good, doesn't it? It really feels good when you finally make progress in an event that you've always been bad in. Could rain hard and to win. So now, you think you can win? I hope, I hope. Now, is later, is my best event, I show you. Sebastian Venter's win is overshadowed by the Dominator's amazing improvement. Phil Fister forced into third again. More disappointment for Terry Hollands as he has to settle for seventh place. Mark Felix is having a really tough time of it. Poland is starting to run away with this final. If Phil Fister isn't careful, it will be too late to stage a repeat of that 2006 fight back. Hollands continues to fall and is now out of the top five. Don Pope moves up a notch. Mark Felix looks in trouble. There's little doubt who the star of the show is at the moment. Can any of these guys stop Marius Pudzianowski? Next up, one of the cruelest events in Strongman. It's the deadlift. 
Yes, cruel is the word. If you want to get anywhere in Southern California, you got to have a car. But to explain how the deadlift works and what that car's doing there, here's Sven. Car deadlift. A real car this time. We've seen this before, but now it's a real running car. The weight, 345 kilo. That's equal to the last barrel in the qualifier. The athletes has to get down and pull up as many reps as possible within the 75 second time limit. Well, Phil Fister, one of the uh, big three at the moment, only managed two, and a man trying to catch up and uh, overhaul them. Magnus Samuelsson, well, he did okay with four. Dave Ostland also on the fringes at the moment. Well, he did his cause no harm whatsoever with five. Kevin Nee, who's way down the pack, impressed everybody with seven. To take the lead, Don Pope, as you can see, and Sebastian Venter struggling as well. So with Venter and Fister struggling, there's a chance for Terry Hollands to get back Ladies closer to the big three. But of course, Pudzianowski is the man that they're Terry all going to be looking at. Hollins. You would think this is an event that Terry Hollands can do well at. Never mind the sartorial look. That's, uh, that's the old socks look that uh, never works. Your mum always tells you off for that, doesn't she? Well, at least he's out of the gorgeous orange he wore in the heat. Oh, first one was good, wasn't it? Quick. I mean, this is the heaviest deadlift ever in a World's Strongest Man final. Got to lock the hips through. It's quite difficult when the bar comes in at you, just the, the way it pivots back at you. It's very hard to stand up straight. Now, look, five. He's being told there's a lot of time, but he's just having a little regroup here. There's something Terry wasn't happy about, was just the actual width of the bar there. He's trying to get his hands in between, and it's, it's only about three foot wide, which for a normal human's easy, but Terry's got such massive hips and legs. He just get his hands in. Now, can he uh, match Kevin Knee's seven? We'll have to go to uh, the stopwatches to separate them. He doesn't want to be thinking of that, he wants to be sticking another one on top. If he can get another one on here, he will go into first place, and that really will be extraordinary. Remember, good guys like Don Pope and Sebastian Venter barely managed one, and he's done eight. And if Terry's got any sense, he'll look at that and say, well, you know what, I'll get out of here right now, but with Pudzianowski to come, can he afford that luxury? Well, in the end, it's academic. The whistle came in and saved Terry. What a performance. He's back in the picture again. Really super performance from Holland. And you know, Kevin Nee came over to train with him before this event. And Nee's a much better deadlifter. Was beating him in training. And Holland gets the better of him in the final. How much tougher was this than the qualifying deadlift? Oh, much tougher. Um, definitely a lot tougher. I didn't expect to get eight reps. I'm really pleased with that. I knew it was going to be a hard lift. Do you think eight reps will win this event? No, I don't think so. I can't see um, Mark and Maris not beating that, to be honest. Um, they're both normally way better deadlifters than I am. So, no, if, if, I, if it holds up and I take a third place, I'll be happy. Where will Terry end up? Find out after the break when the world's two best deadlifters go head to head. Welcome back. Now we come to the real heavyweights of deadlift. Marius Pudzianowski and after him Mark Felix. For Felix it's been a disappointing final so far. Ladies Although he's got a chance at uh, re-establishing some pride. But as for Pudzianowski, well he's the leader. And the really good news is his closest two challengers have really flamed out in the deadlift. Sebastian Venter managed just one. Phil Fister just Down. two, so anything past two is bonus points for Marius Pudzianowski and he started off as if he means to really put some daylight between himself and the rest of the field. Already looking in some discomfort, but we've seen this before from Pudzianowski, he keeps grinding reps out and I can see already he's got a little baby oil on the thighs there, just uses the bar to jack it up the thighs. Well he's into second place already. And I think he's beaten Terry Hollands there. 
I think that time was faster than Terry, so he's looking at maximum points with Mark Felix to come. This could be the defining moment of the 2007 final. This could be the moment that Marius Pudzianowski reclaims his crown. He's in the lead. Can he make double figures here? How oh, quiet. Yes, he does. They've given it to him. How ugly is that technique, Nick? Look at the pain. He's almost resting it on his thighs there. It's a real uh, little tearjerker just looking at it. The pain and bruising he'll have on his thighs after this event. He's really gambling. You don't get bonus points for beauty in this event. It's all about... Oh, oh, how can you do that? How can you do that without breaking your bones? Oh, he didn't get it. He dropped it. All that effort and he dropped it. And the Polish crowd aren't happy either. Tough decision from the referee there. Well, I don't think they can complain. And uh, whatever they were chanting in Polish, I think, again, you have to say the referee got that one spot on. Pudzianowski thought he'd stolen one, but no, there's the look that says not happening. Ladies and gentlemen, from England, Mark Felix! It's been a horrible event for the big fella from Blackburn so far. No disgrace to make the final, for goodness sake, but any time you get this far, you really want to come out and uh, make a statement. And for Mark, the statement has been, this is all about experience. However, he can restore an awful lot of personal pride with a big effort here. Pudzianowski's 10 is his target. And if you had to ask Mark Felix which event he really liked, this is the one. Well, people have said that uh, his back isn't as strong as all that. And this is a great chance to prove it for Felix. He thought he was going to beat Pudzianowski last year, but he drew equal with him in this event in the final. What an opportunity to beat him. And he does. He matches his 10. But it was a faster time. But he won't want to stop there. He'll want another one. The big fella from Blackburn says, yeah, there you go. 11. And wasn't that good to see all these fans, including all the Poles, roaring him on. Everybody really enjoyed that. And he's not finished yet. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, 11's good enough. I thought he was going to go for a bit of a macho posturing there. And I think Mark said, you know what? I think 11's good enough, and I'm stopping right there. A time for a bit of macho posing now. That's what... Uh, cue the posing. Good on you, Mark Felix. You've deserved it. You've had a bad start to this World's Strongest Man final, but uh, in the event you're best at, at least he's hit his potential. He's plastered the opposition. Mark, did that confirm you being the best airlifter in the world? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, if I needed more reps, um, I would have taken a break all year, but I decided to just go all the way. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Congratulations, unbelievable. Oh, thanks a lot. Felix wins, Pudzianowski falls foul of an eagle-eyed referee and Hollands is back on track. It looks like Fister will be handing his crown over though, the heaviest deadlift ever at World's Strongest Man, not ideal for a man with a back injury. The mighty Marius is now eight points clear, Terry Hollands has profited from a poor showing from Fister and Venter in the deadlift, he's back up into fourth. Ostland is just a point behind Hollands, Samuelsson two points back. Now I'm driving along the famous Highway 1, which runs the length of the American Western Seaboard from San Diego in the south to Seattle up near the Canadian border in the north. It's one of the longest drives in the world, and one thing's for sure, you certainly wouldn't want to drag a fire engine along it. Sven, over to you. Thank you, Martin. The truck pull. We have seen this before in all shapes and forms, but for the first time in World's Strongest Man, we're going to pull a fire truck. Sitting here with firefighter Brian Morris, tell us about this. Um, well, this fire engine here is about our oldest fire engine we have in the city, a little over 20 years old. Right now it currently has uh, over 2,000 feet of fire hose on it. When it's full we have about 500 gallons of water, which it currently is full right now. And I'd say collectively with all the weight, the fire hose and the water that we have on board here, we weigh close to 20 tons. Well, we're going to have a tough pull. My tip would be Phil Fister, excellent truck puller and former firefighter. Yeah, who's going to get a lift by pulling the fire engine? You would think it's the guys that are physically big here. Magnus Samuelson. Well, 48.01 was a pretty good time, but only he and Venter have completed the course so far. And Phil Fister, with that albatross around his neck, he's the guy that Sven does tips. That's usually the kiss of death right there, but you would think that Phil, with his firefighting background, and that raw power of his 
And it's the fact that these guys can use their arms in this event, these big guys, that really sorts out who's who. I've uh, heard that even the governor of West Virginia has turned up to cheer Phil on. He's a real hero in his hometown of Charleston. But could he pull that truck? I mean, the governor of California could. <laughs> Arnie, where's Arnie when we need him? You bet, no problem. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But look at him, he's using his arms here. And I tell you what, it's the fact that the rope is there is the only thing that gives Pudzianowski a chance here. On body weight, he's so much smaller than the likes of Hollands and Samuelson and Fister, of course. But, uh, Look at the body weight, he's using it to good use, isn't he? Wearing those rock climbing boots as well, Nick, that uh, we've seen so many use before. It's great for friction. You can drive with the legs. And it's about keeping going. That's the key, keeping going. Fister looking at 48.01. I don't think he's going to quite crack that, but he should finish the course. So it's good points for Big Phil. But Fister may be disappointed with that. I think he was looking at maximum points, and he's not going to get it. Well, just a, a bit of disappointment comes over his face there when he realizes that the pull didn't come the way he thought Ladies it would. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it from Poland, Marius Kuczynowski. Well, Marius is threatening to run away with this tournament. A good pull here on the fire engine could just cement his coronation his father there in the crowd his father about half Marius's size but what a cheerleader he's being and he comes from a weightlifting background so there's no question where Marius got the uh, strongman bug and once you've got that momentum you've got to keep it that's what so many of the other competitors have had a, have problems with and it's getting it's driving those legs in getting that grip but then keeping those arms moving as well I remember last year he got beaten by Phil Fister in this event in that incredible comeback by Fister and if he can just keep this going look at that incredible pull he's using on his arms there his arms are stronger than almost anyone else's legs phenomenal stuff this is fast from uh, Marius really fast is it another maximum for Pudzianowski it looks like it it really does look good for Marius Pudzianowski well look at this he comes back does an incredible Fingles fingers and then manages to beat Phil Fister and what has to be Fister's banker the fire truck pull this surely is Pudzianowski's yearn could well cement the fact that he is the greatest of all time Ladies and gentlemen, from England, Terry Holland. Big Tell with that great effort on the deadlift has certainly uh, put himself in a position to challenge for a podium finish. Obviously he's not going to win it, not the way Pudzianowski's turning this into a procession, but uh, a top three for Terry Holland's really would prove that he is continuing to improve year on year, and, and, and you just get the feeling that his day is going to come, even if it's not 2007, the big fella is getting closer and closer to the summit. I think the fact that he's won Britain's Strongest Man and now he's he's up there, he's fighting for a podium, he, he stands a possibility of uh, maybe getting fourth or even third, wouldn't that be incredible? And, and it would say, prove to him that he, he's done the right decision giving up his work and, and going for this title. You've only got a small window of opportunity in life and Terry's going for it now. And he's certainly making uh, short work of this uh, fire engine. He's got a chance of knocking Pudzianowski off. And I think if he can do this, well, even if he just gets second, and I think, oh, he's nicked it. He's nicked it. He's taken top spot. A great effort right on the finish line for Big Terry. You can see what it's taken out of him, everything, but it's maximum points. And that podium finish is really on for Big Tell. That's quite a lift for Yoko Ahala, former world's strongest man there, in charge of equipment, trying to lift Big Tell off the ground. But uh, you remember, in years previous, he'd have been on the ground for five minutes, gasping for air. He's done a lot for his fitness. Terry, surprise or just the best truck puller here? Um, yeah, I knew it was going to be tight between me and Maris, but that was one hell of a pull. As I was getting towards the end, I thought, I'm not going to make this, it was getting that hard, but... um. I'm really happy with that. Congratulations, great job. Thank you. Victory for Terry Hollands in one of the toughest truck pulls ever. Fister finishes way down in fifth. Pudzianowski is in the top two again. 
None of the bottom half finished the course, but Don Pope managed the best distance. Me and Felix will be disappointed. That record equaling fourth title is Putinovsky's to lose. Terry Holland's dream of a top three finish is within touching distance. A top five finish looks beyond Mark Felix. Despite Don Pope's decent showing in the truck pool, he remains last. Can Putinovsky win that fourth title? To find out, let's head over to Huntington Beach. Well, we're building up to the crescendo, aren't we? On the car walk, six down, three to go. Mark Felix is continuing to make his move. Ladies and gentlemen, from England. But Big Tell into third place, and he's got Sebastian Venter in his sights as well. And first of all, though, he's got to keep Fister out of the uh, mix. Fister's got uh, good production out of this one. Currently second behind Mark Felix, who's making a, a late charge. So what can Hollands do here? It's about controlling that car, keeping your momentum, but keeping control of that car. Terry's got great rhythm here. He's flying. Surely he can't keep this going. Look at the concentration. Look at the effort. Oh, he's unbelievable. Can he beat 20 seconds? Incredible time for Terry Hollands. Well, he's for real now, isn't he? Well, his girlfriend Carly cheering him on wherever he is, from a small contest in Kent to here on the big stage. That was incredible from Hollands. And Sebastian Venter knows that if he wants to hang on to second place, he's going to have to put in a big one right here. Well, Pudzianowski's made it a procession. The Poles were hoping for a Polish 1-2. Terry Hollands has stepped up and said, you can forget that. I fancy number two. And Venter's got to really fly if he's going to stay in second spot. Looking good so far. Look at the effort, though. Starting to just stumble out of line a little bit. Is Terry Hollands 19.5 going to be under threat? Venter is going well. It's looking good. It's looking very good, but it's just outside. Hollands has pinched another point back on Venter, but that's good. That'll keep him in second place. I think Hollands was lucky there. He, he had a little stumble at the start when he picked it up and had to do a second pickup. That could have been Venter's. So Hollands puts up big numbers. Venter puts up big numbers. We know what this fellow's going to do. The guy that's missing the boat in this event is Phil Fister. Wow, Marius, uh, if he gets in the top two here, Nick, he wins it, his fourth title. That's he winning something like this with a, an event to spare. As you can see, control is all over the place. I don't think he's going to get a top two. He's driving that car. Hey, yeah, you've got to get those wheels off the ground. Well, he's really picked up speed after that slow start and destroyed it. His time is 14. It was a terrible start, but he just he just picked up momentum. Just the most wild power there. That's incredible. 400 kilos, a whole car, and here it goes into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you are looking at history. A record equaling four World's Strongest Man title for Marius Pudzianowski. And that equals the two great Icelanders, Magnus Ver Magnusson and John Paul Sigmundsson. Marius, one year ago in China, you lost your title, World's Strongest Man, to an American. Now, you are again World's Strongest Man here in America. Happy now? No, yes, yes, I'm very happy. Four times World's Strongest Man is beautiful. You know, belong to a very, very elite club. Four times World's Strongest Man. Will he come back for title number four, five and be the one and only? Four times is nothing, five times is the best. Four is nothing, five, I won't. Congratulations, Morris, you're the greatest. Thank you. Poliska Gudom. Another win and another 10 points for Putinovsky. Terry Hollands pips Sebastian Venter by a tenth of a second. Kevin Nee takes sixth, three seconds ahead of Samuelson. Dave Osland is slipping away. There it is then, confirmation that Maris Pudzianowski is 2007's world's strongest man. Terry Hollands is within touching distance of a remarkable second place. At the bottom of the table, Ostland and Felix will be the most disappointed. Welcome back.
we now come to the final event of this year's World's Strongest Man, the Atlas Stones. So often we've seen such high drama on the Stones, but not this year because it's been a procession for Marius Pudzianowski. The leaders after five, Dave Ostland and uh, Kevin Nee, the two uh, Americans. Tremendous time. And how about this? The new champ goes up against last year's champ. And it was last year's champ, Phil Pfister, that won the title on the Stones by beating Pudzianowski. So the two of them are together here, and Pfister with a chance to just sort of say, you know what, you might be the champion, but I'm still king of the Stones. And for Marius, a chance to say, I'll get you back on the Stones. So this is a private duel between two guys who are not only big rivals, but also have an awful lot of respect for each other as well. And who's coming out on top? It's not about times or points, this. It's about who's the governor, and it's going to be Phil Pfister. For once, something goes wrong for Marius Pudzianowski. He is human after all. And Pfister says, OK, I've had to give up my crown, but I've still done you on the stones, Marius. Well, it's almost a bit like last year. Do you remember when Pudzianowski lipped out the final platform and it fell off? But these two have so much respect for each other. Oh, I'm sure Fist will be delighted with this. Nothing worse than being the well, former world's strongest man. But at least you've got uh, a little bit of pride back. But the battle now is for silver and bronze, effectively. Pudzianowski, we know, is uh, in a league of his own right now. But the way it works on countback, if... Terry Hollands beats Sebastian Venter. Sebastian. Hollands will take second. But Venter, you know, is absolutely determined to make this a Polish one and two. Whatever happens, Terry Hollands has stepped up again. Two years ago, he missed out on a place in the final when he exploded on the stones at an absolute disaster. Then last year, qualified, but uh, was among the also-rans in seventh. Here he is with a very good chance at a podium finish and who knows maybe even second he's got to get ahead of Venter Venter's not going to let that happen without a fight and Venter's got his nose in front not by much Collins coming back at him nothing between them look how fast this is as well can Terry do it no Venter's got it and he wanted that badly still a fantastic time for Terry Hollands though but Venter was highly motivated to hang on to second spot there but what a performance from Big Tell. Fast time, third place behind those two poles. That's nothing to be unhappy about. It's the first time we've had a 1-2 since 99. Joka Ahola and Yanni Vertinen. Great effort by Venter there. What a finish. So, congratulations, Terry. Your third place in World Strongest Man 2007. It's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. I really wanted to win that event, but... I mean, it's, it's, I'm happy with the performance. It's my quickest time by a mile on those stones, so I'm really happy. Third place for this year is good enough. I'm improving every year. First year I came, he didn't make the final. Last year, seventh. This year, third. Hopefully next year I can move up at least one notch. It needed an amazing 18.75 seconds from Sebastian Venter to get in front of the man from Dartford, Terry Hollands. The King of the Stones couldn't quite live up to the regal name tag and Pudzianowski down in eighth. So Terry Hollands just misses out on second after that epic Stones encounter. Congratulations to him and Sebastian Venter, but the plaudits go to the favourite and four-time champion Marius Pudzianowski. Well, it's the easiest thing he's had to lift all day and no doubt the most enjoyable. And how long before England's Terry Hollands gets his hands on that trophy? Joy then for Poland and Dartford as Marius Pudzianowski becomes only the third man to win four World's Strongest Man titles and Terry Hollands forces his way onto the podium for the first time. To find out if the mighty Marius can be the first man to win five World's Strongest Man titles, join us next time. Until then, it's goodbye from sunny California.